Today we're going to talk about rabies. Rabies is a virus that most of us have heard about. I know I heard about it a lot when I was growing up. So I thought, let me make a video so I can learn and you guys can learn what it is and how it works. So let's get into it. So what is rabies? Rabies is a disease caused by the rabies lysovirus. This is what's called a zoonotic disease, which means it comes from animals. Most of those animals are dogs. About 99% of the animals with rabies are dogs. Asia and Africa are where about 40% of the deaths in children under 15 occur, and 95% of the total rabies deaths occur. So it's very prevalent in Asia and Africa. It causes a condition called encephalitis, which is brain inflammation. And this results in a whole host of very interesting symptoms, one of which I think a lot of people have heard of is hydrophobia, being afraid of water. I'm gonna find a clip and put it in the description to kind of show you guys what that looks like. Now the bad thing is, is that once neurological symptoms appear, there's pretty much a 100% chance you're going to die. Let's briefly discuss how this works. I'm gonna try my best to break it down as much as I can, because it's a little complicated. So it's capable of entering the nervous system, which is where you get the encephalitis. That's kind of where it travels. It's transmitted through animal saliva. So if an animal bites you and the saliva gets in the wound, you'll probably have rabies if they have rabies and haven't been vaccinated. So let's talk about the life cycle of the virus. So the whole goal of every virus is to infect the host cell, copy itself into other viruses, leave the host cell and go to infect other cells. So as I walk you through this, just keep that final goal in mind. So number one, the virus enters a cell and removes its coating. So this black structure surrounding this little line in there is the coating. The coating has to be removed because inside you have the genetic material. So here is the genetic material. This genetic material has to do a couple things. It has to be copied and then it has to be turned into the pieces of the virus. It gets replicated and turned into copies. Now those copies are turned into a code and this is the natural biological process. So this code can then be turned into the pieces of the virus. And the whole time the virus is using the host cell's biological machinery. So it uses the host cell's functions to replicate itself. Now, once those pieces are created, then they're assembled into the virus. That assembled virus leaves the cell and goes out to infect other cells. So like I said before, the goal is to get into the cell, copy its genetic material, turn that material into the pieces of the virus, assemble those pieces, and then spread the virus to the rest of the host. That's the whole goal of a virus, and specifically this virus. Once the virus infects the host, it takes about 30 to 90 days to show signs and symptoms. It's called the incubation period. What's interesting is that it's been seen as short as four days to as long as six years, but on average, 30 to 90 days. It causes something called encephalitis. I'm not a radiologist, but I believe this little picture I have describes it. So as you can see, there's some spaces between the brain and the skull. This is the brain, right? There's some good space in there. And then the brain swells up and you can see that there's not a whole lot of space. Regardless, the brain swells up and it causes all kinds of terrible symptoms. So in this case, you can expect a fever first and then a tingle or burning sensation at the site of the bite. And as I mentioned before, once neurological symptoms appear, I'll describe that in a second, you're pretty much dead. There's nothing that they can really do for you. There are two types of rabies infection, furious, which I believe is the majority of them. And this results in hyperactivity, hallucinations, hydrophobia or fear of water, loss of coordination, aerophobia that I didn't know this, this is a fear of fresh air and drafts, which is really interesting. And then death, the heart and lung failure. Then the second type is paralytic rabies, 20% of cases. And it, as you can assume, it involves paralysis. What I think is terrible about this is that you are slowly paralyzed from the site of the wound and the muscles around it all the way to the rest of your body. And this results in the eventual coma and death. So overall, you don't wanna catch rabies because as you can see, it's a pretty terrible way to die. But this is all preventable, so let's talk about that. Rabies is very hard to diagnose unless you have rabies-specific symptoms. It's hard to diagnose because encephalitis is caused by a whole host of different things. And the symptoms and signs of encephalitis are very similar. Sometimes you know what causes it, sometimes you don't. And this is why it's hard to determine if someone gets infected by rabies, unless you kind of have a story of what's going on. The best way to prevent is animal vaccination. 
But in general, when someone is vaccinated, they receive what's called an inactivated vaccine. They inactivate a strain of the virus and inject you with it to help you have an immune response. And then depending on the category of the exposure, you could get immunoglobulins or antibodies. In general, these are just pieces, things you're given to help you have an immune response against the virus. So let's talk about these categories. So category one, this is when you're touching or feeding an animal or they lick you, you gotta wash your hands. So anytime you handle an animal, wash your hands. Doesn't matter if they're your favorite pet in the world, you gotta wash the hands. Number two, if this animal nibbles your skin, maybe you get a minor scratch without bleeding, you should wash the wound and vaccinate yourself immediately. Will you get vaccinated immediately? Now this is for animals who don't have the rabies vaccine. And number three, bites. If you get bitten by an animal that has rabies and the saliva gets into your wound or if you get bit by a bat you wash the wound get a vaccine immediately and you get the antibodies and immunoglobulin and as you can see from categories two and three if you come into close contact you want to get vaccinated immediately and if it's bad enough get that extra help from those antibodies because you really want to stop the virus from doing the damage that it can cause one last thing i want to note for some reason there are people that will just see an animal, maybe it's a cute animal, and just walk up to it and wanna pet it and think it's okay and they get bit and they might get rabies. Now, I don't think that's all the cases, but I've just seen that on social media, on the internet. So just know, be careful around animals because you don't wanna get this disease because you're not gonna have a good time. So let's go through the summary and review what we learned. We started off defining rabies. It's a disease that comes from animals, mostly dogs, and it causes a condition called encephalitis. We then learned that the rabies lysovirus infects the nervous system. It gets into a cell, it ingests its genetic material, that material is copied, then it's turned into a code, that code gets turned into the pieces of the virus, those pieces get assembled into the virus, and then those copies leave the cell and go to infect other cells. Once you're infected, it can take a little time for signs and symptoms to show up. There's two different types of rabies, furious rabies, paralytic rabies, that all have some very interesting symptoms. But once neurological symptoms appear, it's a 100% chance that you will die. Rabies is very hard to diagnose because of the encephalitis, but the best way to prevent it is to vaccinate animals. Depending on your exposure to the virus, you always wash your hands and you might need a vaccine. And if it's bad enough, you need a vaccine and some extra help from those antibodies and immunoglobulins. That's all I got. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. And just a reminder, don't pet random animals that you don't know. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends. And I'll be back soon with another video.